grateful to you for giving us this time and so grateful to you for your service to our country and to the world at large. I'm going to start right away by introducing our first student with a question for you, if that's okay. He is uh, Nick Becker. He's a senior, and like, uh, like you, when you were a student here, he's interested in flight and aeronautics uh, and may well uh, be on the same kind of journey you are uh, today. So Nick Becker has the first question for you, Shane, but thank you for doing this for us, and thank you for all you mean to us. Thanks, Billy. Hi, Mr. Kimbrough. I was wondering, what is your favorite experiment that you've done or plan to do on the ISS, and how does that compare to your shuttle mission? Well, we have a lot more time up here on this mission compared to the shuttle mission, so we'll do hundreds of experiments in my five to six months up here. Um, so far, I think my favorite one has been, we got to, I got to grow some plants up here, so I grew some lettuce. Uh, so I kind of felt like Matt, Matt Damon a bit in the Martian, but uh, we grew some plants, we got to harvest them, and we got to eat the lettuce while we were up here, so that was a welcome treat to our normal diet. What was it like to orbit Earth for two days before your Soyuz docked to the space station? Yeah, to me, those were a long couple days. We're in a very, very tiny spacecraft built by the Russians called the Soyuz, like you mentioned, and there's not a lot to do in there, and you're uh, three people are in that tiny uh, area for a couple days. So we just kind of got acclimated to the space environment and microgravity a little bit. Um, but in general, just a long two days before we got here to the space station. Thank you. My name is Adam Young. Where is your favorite place to hang out on the space station and why? Well, this, this entire complex is so unique and so cool, but my favorite place and I think most astronauts' favorite place is hanging out in a module called the cupola, um, and, and it's just a module full of windows. So if you get a chance to look it up online, you'll see why it's our favorite. Uh, so it's like a 360 degree window uh, module. It's a pretty small module, but it looks down at Earth all the time, so we just get spectacular views of our planet. Hello, my name is Montana Dickerson. How do you brush your teeth on, in space? <laughs> All right, get to the good basic questions now, but these are good. Um, so we brush, the, brush our teeth the same way, but we have a little problem that, that we don't have on Earth. So up here, we don't have any sinks. So you got a couple options. You can either, whatever's in your mouth, you can spit it out into a napkin, but that gets pretty messy up here. So most folks, including myself, choose to just swallow it. So I'll be looking forward to a sink here when I get back to Earth. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Isabel Moffitt. Is there a trash can on the space station, and can you recycle? So we have a lot of ways to collect our trash. There's Thomas Pesquet, a French astronaut floating by, one of my crewmates. Um, there's a lot of ways, and we have to manage our trash very carefully, because otherwise it's just a mess up here, and things are all over the place. Um, so what we do in general is separate our dry and our wet trash. So our dry trash meaning paper, or maybe clothes, things like that. Wet trash meaning anything that could smell in a week or a month or three months from now. So food containers and things like that. So we try to separate those um, and, and keep those clean. And then we put our trash in these cargo vehicles that come up every so often. So we have a Japanese cargo vehicle attached right now. It's gonna leave here at the end of January. So before it leaves, we're gonna put all or, all or whatever we can of our trash on board that vehicle to take it away. Thank you. My name is Caroline Colavito. How do you wash your hair in space? <laughs> we have a microphone. Another tricky thing to do, but uh, what's kind of cool is when you just put water on your hair and you do it out of a drink bag, and we'll talk about that here in a minute too, but it comes in a bag like this and it's just water. 
Um, so you just squirt it out onto your head, and the cool thing is it doesn't go anywhere. The surface tension allows it to stay on your head. Um, so you can wash it that way. We also have shampoo that we use. It's a little different than the shampoo you use on Earth, so it's not so foamy and things don't go everywhere. Um, so we use that, and I use that in combination with some water to wash my hair every day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Libby Stewart, and I was wondering if you experience weather in space. So on the space station here, we don't experience weather. It's always pretty much the same temperature. It's very comfortable, about 72 degrees, kind of like your school is or an office building would be. Um, and we can regulate it if we want up and down a little bit, but in general, it's very consistent. Uh, we do, from this vantage point, though, get to see weather on the Earth. Uh, we get to see from above thunderstorms and tropical storms and hurricanes and things like that. Uh, really spectacular looking, but we know the devastation a lot of those cause on Earth. All right, showering is uh, very tough because we don't have showers. A lot of people don't know that. So uh, we're pretty much going five, six months without a real shower. But what we do is we get a towel or a washcloth and you either wet it down um, by the, the water bag, like I mentioned before, and then you put, we have uh, kind of liquid soap that comes in a pouch like this. So you also put that on your towel and then you just wipe your body down. Um, so you do that and then you'll wash your hair typically every day. And it, we usually do it after we work out. So we work out for about two to two and a half hours every day, and we're pretty sweaty by the end of that, so that's obviously a great time to take a shower. Thank you. Hi, my name is Austin Law. How do you sleep in space? Is your equilibrium messed up? So I missed the first part of your question. Could you repeat that again? Um, how do you sleep in space? All right, how do you sleep in space? Um, so we have sleeping bags, and I brought mine out here to show everybody. Um, so here's our sleeping bag, and, and we have a little closet, I would call it, a uh, closet shape that's our bedroom, so we all have a kind of a private place we can go. And you just attach this sleeping bag onto one of the walls, and you can do it upside down, right side up, it doesn't matter because there's no up or down in space. Um, so whatever's more comfortable for you. Uh, and also in there you have a laptop where you can do your email and things like that. So it's kind of a nice private place to go to sleep and uh, call home potentially or do emails. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rex Wolfen and this is Lady McDowell. We have two questions for you. What foods do you miss in space? How does a salt shaker work? <laughs> All right, so a good question on the salt shaker. I happen to bring one for you. So um, everything up here, like salt, is actually in liquid form. So we have liquid salt, which comes in a little bottle like this. And then you just open the cap and you just squirt the uh, salt or whatever condiment that you like. We have uh, pretty much everything up here. And you squirt that on your food. Um, and once you do that, it'll stick to your food. So that's a good thing. Um, and then you uh, kind of mix it up with your spoon or fork and then eat it. And I didn't hear your first question. What foods do you miss in space? I'm sorry, it's not coming through clear up here for some reason. What foods do you miss in space, Shane? Uh, what foods do you miss? Okay, thank you. Um, well, I do miss crunchy things because we don't have a lot of crunchy things. So when we had that lettuce um, a few times up here, that was really nice. And I miss things like pizza, which you guys probably like as well. Uh, we don't have any of that up here. But in general, our food is very good, uh, pretty good variety. Uh, we get to share with the Russians a lot too, so we'll have a lot of their cuisine and they'll have some of ours. We're lucky to have the French astronaut on our board, so we get some European food as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jack Merritt. How do you drink water without it floating away? All right, I'll try to show you here. Good question. 
So what I got here, this isn't water, but it's any, any drink bag we have is like this. This is an orange drink, so it's labeled. Uh, we just have powder in it until we hydrate it and put water in it, but it then turns into kind of a giant Capri Sun pouch, like you guys are probably used to. We do have a special straw, uh, because if you didn't have the straw on it, the liquid would just come out all over the place. So I'll try to show you what happens when you release the straw here. So you can just see uh, a ball of orange liquid here. And it'll just keep coming out and getting bigger the longer I do it. Uh, but in general, we just drew, when we're doing our drinks, you drink what you want and then you close the straw back up so it doesn't come out like this. I got a little mess here than I thought. <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time? So we do get weekends off typically, so we do have some free time. I love calling my family and friends uh, back on Earth and chatting with them and catching up. So that's always nice. We also 